Welcome everyone, Mate Talk Time. Um, in the beautiful city of Canberra here in Australia, this is our capital city. Now, I'm shooting outdoors, which means that there's a lot more things at play here, one of it being the sun. So I've put myself in the shade. The cloud was covering the sun beautifully. All of a sudden it's like, oh, you want to film? No worries, I got you. And so the background is all lit up, but I'm gonna, we'll see how we go, we'll see how we go. You can see in the distance, Parliament House, big, beautiful structure. Uh, I thought, and there's a different sort of setup. Rather than me being, you know, my big head being in the frame, I thought I'll show you the expansive uh, of what Canberra looks like. Canberra's a beautiful city. I mean, there's not a lot to do. I'll be give you a bit of a heads up. But if you love museums, art galleries, things of that nature, glorious. All right, let me um, let me kick off. It's going to be a different kind of mate talk. You probably would have seen by the timestamp that I'm not going as long today. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna sort of bring you into a little bit of a secret of how I do things when it comes to testing new fragrances. And uh, I wanna share four fragrances that I am really enjoying at the moment. But first, let me, uh, let me cover off a few of the housekeeping. Now, just for, the, for those people who are new to Mate Talk and what it's all about, uh, it is, I've said it before, it's like a meandering river. It just sort of takes a long time to get to where I gotta go. <laughs> so for those who are not interested in that kind of style, there's plenty of other content on the channel that hits the mark. I'm actually doing more two minute breakdowns. I'm gonna see if those um, resonate with people. I did them before, but they weren't as successful as I thought they were going to be. So I'm gonna do it again on some of the earlier, on some of the, the latest um, videos that I've been doing. If you wanna to move to the important part, which is what's the fragrance about, just go to the chapter marks. I take a lot of time to actually purposely check them, chapter mark everything so that it makes it super easy for you guys. But first, the meetups. So next week I will be, so I'm doing, as I mentioned, or as I think I mentioned, a tour around Australia. Uh, next week I am in Perth. So Thursday, sorry, Tuesday, the 8th of August, I will be at the Perth Libertine store, which is in Myers, 12 till two. If you're able to make it, I would love to see you guys there. Bring a fragrance that you're loving, or if you know that Libertine have it, let's earmark that and let's have a look at that and uh, enjoy it together. Because I want to know why do you love it, and uh, you know, enjoy some uh, enjoy some fragrances together. Then in Brisbane, I will be there on the 10th at this time at the Libertine store, which I believe is in New Farm. Now, for those I don't have it with me, but I do have uh, Libertine. They've given me like a sample set of packs, uh, sample set of packs, mm -hmm. and there's a whole bunch of different samples in there. They're phenomenal. All right, so that, that box is probably worth 200 plus dollars. Anybody who meets me at the Perth, anybody who meets me at Brisbane, I'll have one of these for each of those locations. We'll raffle it off. Some lucky person can win. Boom. All right, the next thing, the next meetup is in LA, and that will be on the 9th of September. We've decided, I think it's now pretty much settled, that it will be at Neiman Marcus on Rodeo Drive. As we get a little bit closer, I'll, I'll announce times and all the rest of it, but I'm thinking about 11 a.m., all right? Just to give you a heads up, but we'll refine that as we get closer. And for those who do meet me at that Neiman Marcus, I'm gonna bring some Anchor Kush uh, fragrances. So that's something that is not as well dispersed or has distribution wide within the U.S. These are incredible fragrances, Aussie perfumer. Um, anyway, I'll bring those and we'll raffle those off. So there'll be things to be won. All right, next thing is, the Oligarch Online. Have a look at this. This was an awesome event. It was a international, I'm so glad we opened it up to internationals because in the end, we had all these amazing people from around the world. I felt, I felt like Mr. Worldwide and, and I'm sure Kevin did too. I mean, we had people from the US, UK, Singapore, Spain, Netherlands, Denmark. I think that was it. In case I've missed something, I'll put it here. But was such an awesome event and then all obviously uh, across Australia um, had a chance to experience fragrances together look at these two awesome men they actually bid for the throne and won and uh, they were there part of the whole event now, I am going to be creating a production from this so you'll be able to see this whole thing come to life um, so yeah you'll see how it, because we want to do more of these events so that'll give you an idea I am in a public space so I'm hearing <laughs> I tend to be Mar director Marcelo tends to be like, I want to keep things quiet, and but anyway, I'm in an open space, it is what it is. Alora, um, episode to be released, boom, that's it. All right, so let me show you a little secret that I like doing. 
So whenever I'm testing new fragrances, and I'm gonna show you four today that are really hitting the mark for me, I have a, a diary, uh, it's super nerdy, all right? So I, I, I get it, uh, anyone who's judging me right now, <laughs> I apologize. Um, and rather than just a diary, I, this is a really, it's, uh, anyway, it's, I like things to be fancy. I mean, there's, what's wrong with that? Anyway, um, so what I do is I spray the card, write the name of the actual fragrance. I spray on skin and then spray on card. So I do both together at the same time. And then rather than start going into notes and all that sort of stuff, I, it's more first impressions. What am I getting from the fragrance? What am I you know, detecting? How does it make me feel? Does it remind me of things? Does it take me anywhere? Um, all of the above. So today I want to bring four fragrances to you that are that I've been testing lately. Some of them have been out for a while, others are new releases and I yeah I'm just really really enjoying. So number one is Guidance by Amouage. This is, so I actually I sprayed here because I'm trying to find it. Now let me just show you because you can tell when I really love it how much I've been spraying. So Guidance it's been hit pretty bad. Yeah, it's been, I'll, I'll, I'll do a close up of that. So on opening, I get this fruit-like component to it. And I, and I know that I've, I've used this before, that, that it's like an apple. Sometimes I detect like an apple. And I actually think, because I'm, I'm gonna be certain that there is some incense in here. I haven't checked out notes, all right? So just give you an idea that this is me just uh, going completely rogue. I could be just making stuff up. Uh, but this is what I'm detecting and I think it's the because it's sweet like but still like a smoky not smoky but like a dustiness to it and I think it might be olibum because I know that like a sweet incense does have that the sweetness in there but also has the the, the resinous components to it um, I asked so a, a regular commenter on Mate Talks is Divine Frag I want to thank you for always writing stuff. And actually, I love Divine Frag. He is very, um, I, I compared him, I wrote, I wrote this in a comment, so I'm not saying anything that's out of place here. I wrote in a comment to him saying that I, he reminds me of J. Jonah Jameson, where he'll look at a fragrance and go, uh, crap, crap, mega crap, you know? So to actually hit the mark with this man or this person, actually, I don't even know if it's a man or a woman, and I don't want you to tell me, one day we will meet up Divine Frag and you will introduce yourself as uh, at Divine Frag and that way it'll be an awesome meetup. Um, he, she is very, has a very high um, level when it comes to fragrances uh, and if they're good or not. There are some fragrances that I've mentioned in the past that I absolutely love and he or, he or she, Divine, will then say no. Nah, don't like him or etc. Ex ex uh, et uh, he mentioned recently because I asked, I said to him, "What?" A, <laughs> I keep calling him him. I'm hoping it's a him. I keep. Um, I asked Divine if he. I asked Divine if. Now I've got a magpie. This is, this is great. This is all. This is all part of the thing. Anyway, I asked him, what, "What's his thoughts on this?" He actually graded a whole bunch of fragrances that he's been testing and he put this in, I'll put it here, I can't remember what he said, it was like in the okay category. For me, for him to say okay means brilliant in, in my books because I actually, I love this fragrance. This fragrance has hit the mark very, very quickly. It is a floral amber and sometimes floral ambers can be deemed a bit more feminine leaning. I mean, obviously the florals are in place. The truth is, I actually um, sprayed, first I spray for myself, and I'm like, do I like it? Is, is, you know, could I wear this? I've been wearing this, I'm absolutely loving it. It is deemed, uh, so if you look at the bottle, it is uh, in that shape that was traditionally the, the woman's, you know, so they would designate you know, uh, such and such man and such and such woman. And so in this case here, it gives you the feeling that it might be a more female leaning fragrance. I'm wearing it and loving it. My son-in-law, who is very particular about fragrances, he likes, he likes more his fougères, barbershop style. He was wearing this. He was actually, and he's actually kept something like, whoa, this is really good. Really, I also recognize that, I mean, hanging around me as his father-in-law, he is expanding his reach when it comes to his appreciation for other styles of fragrances. But for him to really enjoy this, I was actually impressed. And, and plus, 
you you know the, the it's just this as a as a tester so you don't you're not swayed by the color of the bottle and things of that nature anyway awesome fragrance i wrote here uh it's a vanilla a subtle vanilla on dry down but not gourmand i i found that the sillage on this was moderate however it had seven plus hours i was wearing this thing it wasn't going away it's still on this card i sprayed this card probably about a week two weeks ago uh, glorious opening a road, glorious all the way through, really impressive. Sweet incense is definitely the thing. Um, now, interestingly, I get like a tea on the dry down. I get like a tea like um, vanilla rubos. For those who are familiar with rubos as a, as a, as a tea, it has a beautiful woody um, herbal like tea like quality. So it does have a, a, a tea smell, but there's a woodiness in there also still getting that fruit like component to it anyway guidance for me it's a winner for i think this is comfortably a, a, a female fragrance female leaning fragrance but boys who are not too uncomfortable with floral amber styles this one here i'd recommend to you all right so that's the first one from amouage the second amouage i want to talk about sorry i apologize that my head is down now, I have Interlude Man, and I've mentioned how Interlude Man, uh, I feel that it is just, you know, just beautifully, it radiates like nothing else, it's potent. Um, it also connects me to the universe, similar to Alexandria too by Zerjoff. So when Black Iris came out, I, and, and I'm completely honest here, I dismissed it a little bit like as a flanker. And I thought, well, I've got Interlude Man, do I need Black Iris? I mean, do we need to, so I've been testing Black Iris. Let me say, I was wearing this yesterday, and this is what, I already knew this would be the case, but this is phenomenal. I was wearing, I think I sprayed like at six in the morning, no, 5.30, I left at 5.30, so I sprayed at 5.30 a.m. It would have been, I don't know, like five, six o'clock, so now what, 12 hours? And this thing was still present. This thing was still emanating. I was careful because I knew I was gonna be in the airport, on a plane, other people. I didn't want to sort of, uh, sort of too much. So I only sprayed twice. I put one on my chest, one on my arm, and this thing was constantly. Later, so before I went out to, to the evening, I sprayed again. Uh, it took me to the next day. I woke up this morning wearing or smelling black iris. What's the difference? And this is the key for me, because as I, as I was writing my notes, I actually wrote, um, I have, I have interlude, why should I buy this one? <laughs> so, if look, correct me if I'm wrong, anyone out there, I find that for me, this one is greener and, and has that iris powdery component to it, that interlude, uh, on top of interlude man. It still retains all that incense quality. I find that also it has rosemary on the opening and I feel that the rosemary does lend itself more to that, those green elements of the iris. I don't find that it is as fruity as Interlude Man. Interlude Man, I believe, has like an oregano note, which gives it some kind of sweetness in, to my nose. Um, it, it has a very particular sort of vibe, whereas here I find that it's still got that Interlude DNA, but it's now a lot, a, a, not a lot, slightly greener, has green elements to it. I don't know, now what I need to do is put them back to back, so put Interlude and uh, Black Iris against each other and see how, they, but I feel, I feel that this one lasts longer. I feel that this one here um, on two sprays really just continue to, to be present. I could smell it very comfortably. Anyway, so Black Iris, I'd love to see what uh, others think of Interlude Man Black Iris. What are your thoughts? Uh, it is considered as a woody amber, so I'd be interested to know what your thoughts are there. So, okay, they're the two from Amouage that I've been testing. I've also been testing quite a bit of um, the BDKs. I'm in love with all things BDK. I want to expand my library when it comes to these guys. And two that I want to share. One is, is it's Amber Safrana, sorry. Um, I was asked by one of the subscribers, R Ricardo from Poland. He's actually a, a Chilean man living in Poland. I love it. 
And while I was in, so this got released, I think earlier this year, if I'm not mistaken, or late last year. Anyway, the bottom line is we didn't have it in Australia. Uh, I was in Rome at the time. Ricardo reached out to me and said, what should I do? Should it be Rose Tobacco or Ambra Safrana? At the time, I went into one of the stores and tested. I liked it. However, the weather was kind of warm and I feel that Ambra Safrana was a little bit, it's, I think it's built more for cooler weather. I have been wearing it during our winter here. Hang on, I've got it somewhere. My goodness. So I love Tobacco Rose uh, and I feel that this Tobacco Rose and Amber Safrano are almost like friends of each other. Tobacco Rose is, uh, if you want to, I would say a bit, bit more feminine leaning because of the rose, the, the sort of the nectar-like, honey-like components that it has. So this would be perfect for a man. So if a man and woman are wearing this or a silhouette of each other, someone is wearing the, the rose tobacco and somebody's wearing Amber Safrano, I think the two of you guys would just be this wonderful, incredible sillage and, and this, this, this silhouette of the two of you together. I have been wearing this. It is spectacular, really. I mean, it was like instant pure magic when I, when I uh, first sprayed it. On opening, it does have a slight I mean, you can detect that, that, that saffron that's in there. And that saffron for me is very suede-like. It does have an earthiness to it, but there is a sweet note in there. And it took me, I mean, so disclaimer, I did look because I, I was doing my head in. I'm like, it was everything, everything is sweet notes to me. It's everything fruit, you know? I, I was getting disappointed in myself, but it does have a, so like a, a sweet dark fruit and it's a plum. I think that BDK does really well. They use a plum in a lot of their opening of their fragrances and they just do it just divine, just divine. Anyway, Amber Safrano, new one in the, in the collection. Um, other notes that I wrote here are, so yes, a gentle vanilla. So it does have a very gentle vanilla as it begins to dry down. It does go into a slight sandalwood. So it's a little bit of a, a woody. It says it has cedar wood in it. I'm not detecting that cedar-like quality, but I am detecting more of that woody sandalwood component. Um, the opening is sweet. There is a slight animalic, and I did write down just on just a flash. So you spray, the, you're getting that that dark fruit. You're getting that slight suede saffron component, but there is a slight animalic that sort of kicks in there, and I'm not sure what that is. But it was I liked it. It was it's that beautiful attraction repulsion. I smelled it. I'm like, oh, that's sassy, but I like. Um, but this is, and I wrote, it's sensual, it's warm. Um, I, again, I go back that this is a beautiful companion to tobacco rose if you, and, and separate. So even if you have tobacco rose and you wanna wear this one here, the two separate fragrances, um, both are quite spectacular. And I'm gonna move on, last one. So it's a dry wood. For those interested, that particular fragrance falls into the dry wood category. Now the last one, because I wanted to also appeal to the Northern Hemisphere, the last few I've said are a little bit more on the ambery, cooler weather side of things. This one here, and again, I will, sorry, I'm, you're showing uh, my forehead. Um, this is Villa Neroli, also by BDK. This is, um, again, I'll, I'll, I have been just smashing this sample. This sample was full. and. I have been going hardcore on this. Now, believe it or not, this is actually deemed as a floral amber. It is deemed as a more female leaning fragrance. For me, again, so I've been wearing this like crazy. My son, who's a 26 year old, um, he's been wearing this. So, you know, so, so boys who are a little bit comfortable with more floral, lighter fragrances, no problem at all, has this glorious orange blossom on the opening. I mean, to the point where you just, you know, it, you, you like those cartoons where you begin to melt and you sort of float in the air. Uh, so it has this beautiful orange blossom, nectar-like. Actually, I wrote it here, and I like the way I sort of rolled out. Um, so I, <laughs> double exclamation mark, gorgeous. Uh, on first spray, evolution dry down, everything. So the whole thing from the, the from the start through its movement to the to the, to the dry down, it's just it works. So it's an orange blossom laced with a vanilla nectar. And I, I like, as I was writing this, as it was coming to me, I'm like, exactly right. It's this orange blossom with this beautiful vanilla nectar that goes through it. It has a touch of green that I noticed, especially in the opening. And it definitely has, on skin, so I wasn't detecting it on card, but on skin, it does have 
a slight musky component to it. I know that there's ambroxan in here. I know that uh, ambroxan does create this beautiful musky, woody component. But with that, and that orange blossom never goes away. That orange blossom neroli component to it is just magic all the way through. I love Paris Monte Carlo's neroli mediterrano. I find that the, that particular fragrance is um, very true to the neroli scent. That orange blossom, that sweet nectar, or that sweetness, the greenness and the leaves, it's all part of this. This is not that. So if you like that style, the more fresher component, then Neroli Meditanam does it really well. But if you want something that's more sort of skin-like and has different elements to it, it does evolve quite a lot, then I was actually mowing the lawn with this thing. And then I felt, I mean, I hate mowing the lawn, to be honest. And this was at least making that a pleasurable experience. Beautiful for summer. This would be amazing as a going out on a, on a warm, balmy evening. So Villa, uh, Villa Neroli, new one, I think it's a new one. It was released 2022, 2023 from BDK. Boom, that's me done. It is a bit more, actually, I just saw that. It is a bit more female leaning, but as I said, I'm wearing it. My son's wearing it. Bada bing. All right, hope you, uh, that was a different kind of mate talk. I didn't, didn't even have a mate. Um, no, I didn't even have a drink. I was, like I said, I'm just setting up and I'm going to go. All right, footnote. So after filming that segment near that lake, for those who are following me on Instagram, you'll see that I was running around on a scooter trying to find the right location to film today. So I had my jacket on. It is quite cold outside. I am wearing today Amber Sofrano. I walked into the lobby, starting to take my jacket off. I'm like, ooh, so hot. The young man who checked, uh, checked me in yesterday into the hotel, uh, he saw me. Hello, Marcelo. We started chatting. All of a sudden he says, ooh, I really like your perfume. Not that I thought he was joking, but I, I did find it, I'm like, I'm like, can you smell my fragrance? And he's like, 100%. He goes, it's really projecting. I said, what are you detecting? He's like, oh, it's ambery, it's warm, it's kind of oody. And I, as soon as he said, kind of oody, I'm like, I said, are you into perfumes? And he says, yeah, I love fragrances. He opens up Perfumista for those who have the app. He showed me his vast collection. I had the sample with me of Amber Sofrano and I, uh, he sprayed it on and in his words, so this fragrance is pure magic. And as you can see, like the notes that I took are on point, awesome projection, great longevity on skin. This is a real winner. So this is the young man. He allowed me, I asked him, would it be okay if I take a photo with you? Um, and just, and I did mention that I was going to put it on today's Mate Talk and he said, yes, please. So thank you to this young man. I was going to name his name, but you know what? You have to come to the hotel and uh, you can be introduced to him. He is a perfume lover also. So guess what? Amber Sofrano is a winner. When that happens, that in my, in my book, I get a big tick on that. And uh, it's, uh, so like I said, Tabac Rose, Amber Sofrano, both of them, two separate fragrances, but both pure magic. See everyone, see you guys all on the next month to talk.